the book is No Time to Panic, How I Curbed My Anxiety and Conquered a Lifetime of Panic Attacks. Um, so for people who don't know, explain what a panic attack feels like. I mean, they're as unique as a fingerprint, right? So everybody has a different getting, experience. Yeah, my mouth it. is going dry <laughs> just <laughs> listening. They're super unique, but typically it's racing heart, rapid breath, tunnel vision, sweating, trembling, feelings like sometimes people think they're having a heart attack. Sometimes people feel derealization. They don't know where they are. Uh, it's invariably unpleasant. Mm -hmm. So like, if you've had one, you may not know that you've had a panic attack, but you know that something major has just hit you. How many of us have them? A lot. So the science says that 28% of Americans will experience a panic attack Almost in their lifetime. Third, yeah. But most of us oh, didn't know. We, I didn't know I had one. I would say it's twice that. So I the would psychologists that in number. the book say that it's probably closer to 50%. Yeah. So like every other American will experience a panic attack in their lifetime. I'm now looking at these lovely faces. Right. All right. By, by show of hands, who here has experienced a panic attack in their lifetime? Yeah. And That's who have you, who yeah, have you thought you were having a heart attack, but then it went away? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see that? That's 40%. 40% of everybody who presents at an ER with chest pains thinking that they're having a heart attack is actually having a panic attack. And the sad part is only 1% to 2% of them are treated for panic and released. The rest yeah. are told, oh, it's not a heart attack. You're not going to die. We, oh, we can't tell you what it is. So how long did you suffer? And then, and then I mean, the book really <clears throat> is comprehensive. It takes you on a journey of treatment for panic attacks. How yeah. long did you suffer? 20 years, 20 plus, 23 years. Yeah. I had my first one in college, defending my college thesis. It was the thing I knew best in the world. And I felt like I had cats clawing at my neck and I had no idea what happened. I thought it was like molting into a werewolf mm -hmm. or something. And then it happened on air um, and radio and then TV for many years. And it took me like, I've been to therapy. My dad was killed in a plane crash when I was very young, mm -hmm. when I was 12. And so I'd been in therapy and I should have known what anxiety was and panic was, but I didn't because a lot of people don't know. And so it took me 15 years to realize that these bouts of nerves that I was suffering were actually full on panic attacks. Okay, advice for handling them. Oh, there's so much. Yeah. Like, the first thing is the last on air panic at attack I had was with David Muir, December 4th, 2020. Uh, on air, and I was just so miserable, I was in Phoenix, and I ran back to try to get home to my kids, and I'm lugging my carry-on and my shame hangover up on the aisle in the Southwest flight, mm -hmm. and there's some lady crocheting. I'm like, oh, that'll be calming. So I sit next to her, we start talking, and it was the first time in my life that I just let it all go. I told a complete stranger my biggest secret. That was I'd be Kat, right? Her name Kat was Kat. Kat. Yeah. She actually reads the book. No, yeah, you have no idea. Yeah. Like, that yeah. is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Front to back, she read it over the weekend. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I talked to Kat Armato, yeah. and I just spilled my guts. And I was like, oh, this sharing is a good thing. And it was only then that I was like, okay, there are lots of people who experience this, because Kat and her family had experienced mm -hmm. panic. I'm like, I have to share this. I have to help people.